Donald Trump's fail son, Trump Jr. just published a book unironically titled Triggered, How to Live Thrives on Hate and Wants to Silence Us. And you can see him here with his friend and fellow grifter Dave Rubin reading a book with a similar subject. Now, on the subject of him being silenced, what I find hilarious is that, you know, it's actually the right that wants to silence him because at a recent event with Turning Point USA, he was shouted down by fellow chuds, right-wingers who didn't like what he had to say. Take a look. It's okay, listen. Hey guys, it's still America, it's okay. We're willing to hear them. They're usually not willing to hear us. So I asked a simple question. I think she's triggered, Don. Thank you for advertising the book. We appreciate it. And to show sort of the level of hatred in, in that media that, that we keep talking about, but it is so important because it's still the filter by which everyone gets their news. It's because people hijack it with nonsense looking to go for some sort of soundbite. You have people spreading nonsense, spreading hate to try to take over that room. No, and it's, that's be the real issue no, it's the room. because you're not making your parents proud by being rude and disruptive and discourteous. We are happy to answer a question. Hundred new women created and owned businesses a day in the United States of America in 2018 alone. Those are the facts. Even The View couldn't dispute that. They said, well, we like the jobs. People have jobs. Name a time where conservatives have disrupted even the furthest leftists on a college campus. Right? It, it doesn't happen that way. We're, we're willing to listen. We're willing to listen. See what I mean? And that's, that is the problem. And the reason oftentimes it doesn't make sense to do the Q&A is not because we're not willing to talk about the questions, because we do. No. It's because people hijack it with nonsense looking to go for some sort of soundbite. You have people spreading nonsense, spreading hate to try to take over that room. No, and it's, that's be the real issue no, it's the room. because you're not making your parents proud by being rude and disruptive and discourteous. We are happy to answer a question. Respect the people around you so that they can hear. You don't play. You don't play by the same rules. Let me tell you something. I bet you engage and go on online dating because you're impressing no one here to get a date in person. That was a real sick burn there at the end um, by Kimberly Guilfoyle. <laughs> that, that was such a boomer thing to say because like this is 2019. Everyone is dating online, um, on Tinder or whatever whatever the kids are doing nowadays. Like, that's not something that's uncommon or taboo anymore. There's no stigma attached to that. So for her to kind of own the libs or own the conservatives um, using that, um, it was kind of funny and I enjoyed it. But look, here's the thing. The problem with people like Trump Jr. is that he surrounds himself by yes men and yes women, and he's never challenged, right? You are born to someone who is extremely wealthy, and you don't ever have to really work hard to be successful. You just are born, and you're successful. So it's very difficult when people penetrate your bubble and tell you that you're not actually as great as your daddy and mommy have been telling you. In fact, you're a piece of shit, and you're very average. But like he talks about how the left wants to silence him. That's the cover of his book. And here you see him being shouted down by people on the right, namely because they weren't too happy that Trump isn't as right wing as they want him to be. Now, that wasn't the only reason. Like, from what I understand, based on uh, the analyses that have been given, this was, you know, a confrontation and the booing that was all triggered by him not um, not agreeing to do like a Q&A or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But I just like that he's getting a taste of his own medicine, right? You're being shouted down by your own people and they are actively undermining what you're trying to, to peddle, right? You're trying to say that it's the left who's truly intolerant, the left who thrives on hate, which is funny when your dad was literally elected by scapegoating immigrants, but nonetheless, he always talks about, oh, it's the left, they're the worst ones, they're always protesting on college campuses, and um, looks like it's the right-wingers who are doing that as well. And another thing that really bugs me about Trump Jr. is that he has absolutely no self-awareness whatsoever. So he'll go on national television, primarily Fox News, and he'll complain about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and the corruption and the nepotism. And that's correct. But I mean, 
those who are living in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Is that the, I don't know if that's the right um, saying, but in other words, if you are the beneficiary of nepotism and you were born into wealth, you have no room to talk, especially considering the fact that your sister, Ivanka, and her husband, they're making, what, 80 plus million every single year while being in the White House? So you have absolutely no room to talk, you absolute fucking hypocrite, you moron. With that being said, I'm going to play you a clip from CNN where they actually talked to a student who was there and he's going to give us a little bit more context and um, we're going to get some additional details here that I find absolutely fascinating. So th here's the thing though, uh, a significant part of this protesting wasn't from a group uh, on the left. This was actually right-wing activists who were protesting. I want to bring in Chief Media Correspondent Brian Stelter with me and also Jintak Khan is with us. He's senior staff photographer and news reporter at UCLA's student newspaper. Um, you were at the event and tell us what did you see and, and what was the feeling in the room? This was it, it's so noisy in this video. Just give us a sense of what was actually going on. Um, it felt a lot like um, a normal Trump rally sometimes. Um, at times, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, there was a lot of chanting of uh, USA. There was, um, towards the end, they were America first. Uh, there was one protester in the back um, who actively protested, um, standing by herself. She was wearing a hijab, um, at times um, directly criticizing the people on stage. Um, and it and felt kind of active, yeah. And what else, and what other kind of pro Were you able to get a sense of all the, the other groups that were there protesting? Um, a lot of the people there were Trump supporters, I, feel, I felt like. Um, there were people who in the audience who passively listened and at times did flare up. Um, after the event ended, I did see some people come up and argue with the staff. Um, one person in particular was wearing a Hillary shirt. Um, another person was just wearing, a tr uh, he was wearing a Make America Great Again hat and arguing with the person who was accusing him of spreading lies. Um, there were protesters outside the event um, who couldn't get inside because what I've, from what I hear, the event was at full capacity mm -hmm. and they were denied access because of a fire hazard, for example, for the room being at capacity. I mean, Brian, it, you can tell it was pretty chaotic there. What all do we know? Yeah, and I think what we're seeing is this infighting within the conservative movement about what conservatism uh, is in the Trump age. A lot of the voices you're hearing booing Donald Trump Jr. are far right-wing activists. They've been going to these Charlie Kirk Turning Point USA events for weeks now, uh, for many days now, disrupting these events because they think people like Donald Trump Jr. are not conservative enough. Now, they say they just want uh, nationalism. They say they want even more restrictive uh, immigration proposals. But really what they're doing is they're, they're defining themselves as Christian, conservative, white, straight Americans, and they're trafficking in racism and homophobia and anti-Semitism. These are some of the folks that were also in Charlottesville, not all, but some of them. And they've been trying to disrupt these events with Charlie Kirk and now Donald Trump Jr. because they think that Trumpism is not conservative enough. They want even more restrictive immigration measures, for example. So what we're really seeing, Brianna, is this strain of white identity politics uh, and how it's affecting the GOP. It's this fight within the GOP about what the party is going to stand for. So there you have it. There's a couple of left-wingers there, but for the most part, this was disproportionately, you know, a protest that was being driven by the right. And I find that a little bit scary, right? They were mad because Trump isn't extreme enough for them. Now think about this. Donald Trump is already openly fascistic, right? He's a proto-fascist. So the next logical step, if they want him to shift even further to the right, would be to graduate from proto-fascism to just outright fascism. So, I mean, what do you want? Do you want violence? Is that what they're looking for? Like, I don't know what they're looking for. But when we have this type of movement in the country, this shift to the far right, this hyper-xenophobic nationalistic movement, we should never be talking about the threat that the far left poses, right? Because the far left, what do they want? Healthcare, education for people. Whereas the far right wants more nationalism. They actively want some type of, you know, apparatus that I guess is even more militaristic and disruptive than ICE to 
I don't know what, go into the homes of immigrants and kick them out of the country. Like, I just, I, I don't know what the logical conclusion is of this, but I don't want to think about those implications because that's scary, right? And the thing about Donald Trump and Trump Jr. is you reap what you sow. You have been pandering to these types of people. We're no longer using dog whistle racism. We're using bullhorn racism. They're not hiding it. They are wearing it on their sleeves. So this is what happens when you radicalize people understand that the consequences might come back to bite you in the ass. So um, I'll leave that there. I really have no reason to talk about this other than I just wanted to shit on Trump Jr. because this is someone who is just so insufferable, so arrogant, and um, it's nice to see someone who's an elite who has been born with a silver, silver spoon in his mouth just get a little bit of an ego check, right? Everyone needs that once in a while, but he really, really needed it. His dad does too. <laughs> You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>